average. Why should we have allowed classes to become the largest in the nation? We don't need to do any of that. We, we have the money. So these issues, I think, I would want four years from now to say we are spending more money than the national average. We have lowered the class size. We have improved the quality, and especially for people in, in the poorest neighborhoods. The other is to make a crash program of alternative energy. I have a series of plans. I'll give you a simple one. All we need to make solar energy explode through California is assumable home equity lines. Now, at first, people don't understand that. The risk of putting solar on your home is if you decide to move, you may lose the money you've invested. If you remove that risk, there is no risk, and right now, you would pay the same. People would just rush to go solar. All we need is that the loan that you get for the solar goes with the house. It's, it's like a Melrose bond for people who know what a Melrose bond is that they use for sewers. We need something like that. So I, pr I propose that in my book, and I'm actually working with uh, major environmental groups to get a program in place and have major banks offer this. So these are the type of ideas. We need ideas that we can use the marketplace and other services helped by the state to maximize the development of alternative energy. Does this provide relief to the sticker shock we're all experiencing now at gas stations and in our home utility bills? Well, you know, I mean, 30 years ago, uh, people knew this was coming, uh, and we did nothing about it. So it, it, it is maybe a partially a problem of humans act that way, but uh, these, you know, the two major parties just don't think like that. They think whatever is going to maximize profits for the corporations for the next couple of quarters is what they're for. We have to think ahead. We have to now go into a forced march. We have to accept costs. We have to accept, but, but, you know, this has to be done fairly. The people who are paying the lowest tax rates, that is the richest people in California, they, their tax rate has to go up to help fund these programs. And I'm not asking for anything horrible. I mean, a person normally lives on $50,000 a month. They're now going to live on $47,000 a month, according to my plan. I know this, I see the tears coming to your eyes. How could we do this to people? But, you know, the fact is, what I am proposing to raise people from, from they paying 7.2%, the poor are paying 11.5%, raise it from 7.2% to 11.5% for people earning over 200000 is a minimal sacrifice for these people, absolutely no sacrifice for people making over a million, but it would transform our budget. It would add $10 million, solve the question of education. If, if corporations paid the taxes they paid 40 years ago, 20 years ago, excuse me, 20 years we'd have $5 billion more. If we collected the taxes that aren't collected because they're violating the law, we'd have $7 billion more. And if we raised minimum wage. You know, right now they're all talking about that we're, <laughs> we're raising minimum wage. This is one giant lie. Minimum wage was over $10 an hour in 1968. We have never raised the minimum wage. The minimum wage today is 25%. If they pass their plan, it's 25% less than it was when our economy that since then has more than doubled adjusted for inflation. So why when we're richer, when we have more money per person, we pay the minimum, the poorest people, less? You know, I stated earlier, 90% of our people for 35 years have had no pay increase. Where is all this money gone? It's gone to the wealthiest 1%. This is what's wrong. What, what are the main factors that are going to shape our economy in the next couple of years? Well, the energy crisis is the overriding that people do not understand. There is no more cheap oil. It's coming to an end. It's, it'll end in 25 to 35 years, but it's, the, the feeling, the impact on that's already with us. So the, we had about a 75-year period of very rapid expansion based on this cheap energy. It's going to affect everything in the world. The other thing is the world system now. And there is such poverty all over the world. That's partially holding down the standard of living in the advanced industrial countries. We have to deal with that contradiction. Massive migrations are going to take place because of this. And if America doesn't take an attitude to the world, we're here to participate and help and be your partner, not your enemy, it's a disaster for us. That's what people don't understand. We can't go out and conquer every country in the world because well, we, want, we want to run the world. The empire builders are an extremely negative and dangerous phenomenon. I'm for peace in the Middle East. I'm against the invasion of Iraq and occupation. We're creating a disaster politically for us, and we're endangering ourselves. But don't forget, the two parties that run our society supported Osama bin Laden, supported Saddam Hussein. I don't think you should trust politicians that supported Osama bin Laden. And it's amazing how the media goes, whoops, we can't talk about that anymore. They spent $4 billion supporting Osama bin Laden. And 3,000 Americans paid the price for that. We, those policies have to stop. 
And that brings another issue that's on many people's mind these days, which is terrorism. Uh, how are we handling uh, that? Are we doing a good job of creating uh, adequate security, or how do we find the balance between that and maintaining our personal freedoms? You know, we're the greatest promoters of terrorism in the world. What the United States is doing in Iraq is terrorism. In violation of all international law, your armies invade another nation. You torture people. You murder people. Now we're discovering.